Saxon Algebra 1, Lesson 95. Greetings, my students. We're going to do some art projects today. We're going to look at pictures, draw pictures, that will be the graphs of nonlinear functions. Now, what is a nonlinear function? Um, well, it's not the equation of a line. Y equals mx plus b, that makes a line. We've done a fair amount of work with those. And the pictures always make lines, right? Well, there are other kinds of pictures that are not lines. And that's what we're going to explore today, nonlinear functions or equations. Functions and equations are kind of uh, interchangeable words in the math world. So we're going to look at four different types. So what I want you to do on your paper, imagine your paper as a whole, and we're going to draw four with some space in between them. Underneath them, I guess I should say, so that we can put some labels there. Ready? Like so. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw four different kinds of nonlinear functions. And then John's going to show us some um, variations on each one. And we'll look at those in the book because I don't want to draw 16 pictures. I only want to draw four. Okay. The first one that we're going to talk about is called the quadratic function. We've been talking about quadratic equations quadratic expressions, we've been solving them. They look something like this. If we use our function notation with the f of x, ax squared plus bx plus c. Hmm. All right, we've seen this before, right? We have the squared and the plain number x and the plain number, and we've factored them. Um, so that's not unfamiliar. But if you were to choose some different values for x, plug it in, calculate the y, and then plot the points, you would get a picture that looks like this. Now, we're not going to do the actual work of calculating the points, doing the math. I know you could do that if need be. But what I want you mostly to do is to associate this equation, this function, with this shape. And please, pretend it's perfect, right? Let me show you John's. John's is perfect. Mine is not. See, he went through the work of finding the points and plotting them. We're not going to do that. I know you know how to do that. I want you to focus on the shape. Now, what John also shows us is that you can move it to the right. You can move it down, up and down, or you can flip the whole thing over. And that's by, look, here we subtracted from the x. Here we subtracted from the x squared. Hmm, interesting. Those are very subtle differences, aren't they? But subtracting it directly from the x moves it this way. Subtracting it from the x squared moves it up and down. And then flipping it is a minus sign. Oh, that's a pattern that we're going to notice. You can adjust the x, you can adjust the x squared, or you can put a minus sign in front. And that will always be the three ways that we vary each of the original one. We call this one, that's just plain, we call that the parent function. And these are the three children. Right? We don't usually say children, but parent we say all the time. Parent is like the standard, the basic. I think I just called parents basic. Oh, that's okay. A lot of times they are. Um, okay, so does that make sense? And I don't need you to remember exactly how we change it for these different shapes, but I do want you to remember that it is the same kind of adjustment for all the other shapes that we'll see in a minute. Okay, so that is the quadratic function. I want that to be singular. I don't want that to be plural. All right, the next one that we're gonna do is called the cubic function. Again, we are going to graph the parent, and it looks like this. It's even longer. f of x equals where the quadratic function's highest degree term is a two. In a cubic function, cubic function, the highest degree term is a three. Well, that makes sense because cubed means three, right? This should be like a squared function, but we don't call it that. We call it quadratic. Okay, fine. Um, so this is 
This follows a similar pattern to this. It just has one more higher power. So we just have to go down the line further. And it has a wildly different shape. It goes like that. Again, we could choose values for X and we could plug it in and we could calculate the Y values and graph it. We're not gonna do that. I'm just gonna have you take my word for it. That is the way the parent cubic function looks. It's a, what is that? I don't even know. It's just a wonky shape. And let's look at the ways we can change it up in the book. We can move it this way. See, we're adjusting the X. I have to try to flip the page. We can adjust it up and down. We're adjusting the X cubed. And we can reverse it, right? Normally it was like this. This is reversed by putting a minus sign in front of it. Okay, so three variations once again on how we can adapt the parent function for in three different ways. Okay, the next one is called the square root function. A simplified form of this, I just wanna give you this too, is just x cubed, and a simplified form of this is just x squared. Okay, so this is like the long form and that's the short form. Okay, the square root function doesn't have a long form or a short form, it just has one form. The f of x equals the square root of x. This one is a Nike swoosh. You start here at the origin and you go up hard and to the right. Okay, square root function. That's the way it looks. Here's John's version of it. See, he, he, look at all the work he did. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, he plotted all those points out. And you can see it starts here and it kind of flares up and then it increases as it keeps moving to the right. But, but slowly, right? Notice we can move it right or left by adjusting the X. We can move it up or down by adjusting outside of the pig house. And then we can flip it upside down by putting a minus sign in front of it. Same three types of adjustments to the parent function. Okay, and then our fourth one is called the absolute value function. And in this one, again, there's just one version. The absolute value, the function of x equals the absolute value of x. This one has a very distinctive shape. It has straight lines. This is the only one that has straight lines. And they go up right in the middle of each quadrant to make a V. Okay, here are the four variations. There's the parent. There we adjust directly to the X and it moves it right or left. We adjust outside the X and it moves it up or down. And then we stick a minus sign in front of it and whoop, it goes down. All right, so that is the, the guts of this lesson. That's what John wants us to do, is he wants us to start recognizing the shapes. And so he gives us problems like this. He says, the graph of a quadratic function could resemble which of the following? Okay, so then we have to think, okay, quadratic. That's the one where the biggest term is a squared. That is the parabola shape, the whoop. It's this one. It's B, only graph B looks like the one shown, okay? So you can refer to your notes, right? It was this shape, okay? Um, not, that was the first problem. The second one, given the equations of the following functions, you know what I'm gonna do? Hang on, I need my auxiliary notebook. But where is it? Okay, I'm just gonna rip a page out because I want to be able to refer to these every hot minute. Hang on, I have to rip off my little 
you know, the scandalous little edges. Because if I leave those on, it'll make me crazy. And we don't need that. Hard enough to learn math from a semi-sane person, but a crazy person, no. I'm gonna become, I'm gonna quit every other thing in my life I do, and I'm just gonna become a spokesman for this company that made these, this, this notebook because I love it so much. Okay, 95.2. Given the equations of the following functions, and then it gives us four equations, Identify whose graph most resembles the specified shape shown. Wow, I had a hard time reading that. Okay, let me just show you the four functions. Okay, we can see this one is a cubic function, right? Because it has that three. That's all I'm looking at. The plus one, I know you can do weird things to these, but I'm just looking for the basic part. So this one I know is going to be cubic. The g of x equals... And as soon as I see these signs, I know, okay, that's absolute value. The third one, John doesn't tell us what they are. He just gives us the equation. I'm too excited to wait to write them all down. This is square root. And the, last, the fourth one I'll put up a little bit because I'm out of space. The L of X with an uppercase L, wow, that's weird. X squared plus X plus one. Okay, we know this one must be quadratic, right? Because it's got a squared. So that's all you have to do is just look for the clues in the functions that will tell you which of the four kinds it is, and then we'll be able to match the pictures. And then here's, John gives you this. a few details on them. Okay, so then we have to match. And we're matching the equation and the name and the picture to make sure they're all the same. Okay, so this first one, we don't even have to look at my name on it. We see the x third, and we go, oh yeah, which one's got the third in it? Oh, there it is, it's the cubic function. So it's that shape, that's b. So this first one is b, okay? Absolute value. Oh, let's go by the, let's go in order of the pictures. This swoop de doop thing looks like this. And that's a cubic function with a cubed term. Where do we have, oh, we already did that one. Oh wait, I did this wrong, didn't I? The first one is not the B, that's this one, right? The quadratic. The first one is the, oh no. I'm sorry, my brain has gone insane. This one is A. See, you need a sane math teacher. And sometimes I wonder, just kidding. I just got confused about which one was first and which one was A. Cubic is B. This one is quadratic. This one is absolute value, so we'll put a C there. And this one is square root, which is the Nike swoosh. There, did I do it? So A is quadratic, B is cubic, C is absolute value, and D is square root. Okay, good. Um, and then this time, see, it's in this problem, John gives us the equations and asks us to figure out which graph goes with it. In this one, he gives us the pictures and asks us to figure out which equation goes with it. It's very easy to do. My tongue is just getting tripped up in saying it properly. This is the parabola, that's the x squared, that must be that one. This is the cubic, that's x to the third power, that must be that one. This one we know is the absolute value, flying geese I always think of. So we look for the for formula that has, the function that has the absolute value signs there, it's that one. And then this is the Nike swoosh square root right there, okay? So notice in the practice, it's the same thing. Here he gives you the equations and asks you to pick which shape. Here he gives you the shapes and asks you to pick which equation. In none of these examples do you have to come up with it out of thin air, either the picture or the function. 
in none of these equations do you have to worry about these little details that are added to the equation. Just focus on the main characteristics of the equation. Is it a square? Is it a cube? Is it an absolute value? Is it a square root? That's all you need to know. Um, it's just a matching exercise, and it might remind you of some of those workbooks you did when you were like two years old. Well, no, you were probably older than that. You were probably five or six, but just matching and circling things. So as long as you have this that links the pictures to the equations, you'll be fine. There, I'm done. Lesson 95. I hope that was as clear as mud. Thank you. See you next time. Goodbye.